So far in this series, we've done three rides in the west of the country, i.e. Fjord, Norway. High mountains, wow factor scenery, it's too easy to showcase Norway here. It's nature at its most powerful and extreme. Consider Fjord Norway the pretty girl, the one that gets all the attention. Now in episode 4 we're heading over to the east side of the country. This is the girl that doesn't seek attention. She just quietly goes about her business in a genuine and authentic manner. There's a wonderful inner beauty about her, but it can't be shown in the Instagram world we live in. Let me put it this way. The day before I cycled this route, I stayed at a modest accommodation costing 70 euros. The lady on reception told me breakfast the next day would be served in the old building that I later discovered was 29 years older than the American Declaration of Independence. This is what greeted me. This is Eastern Norway, my friends. So cats and kittens, we start this ride in the small town of Vinster, which is located in the middle of Gulbrand's Dalen Valley. The Valley of Valleys, Norway's longest, starting in Lillehammer and ploughing 250 kilometres through the country to the town of Uta, where it breaks into several other valleys. History is around every corner here. Well, good morning from Vinstra. Beautiful morning. This is vlog number four. Wow, what a little route we got today. It's just 60 k's, but 60 k's of pure, pure madness. We're going from about 100 meters to straight up to over 1,100 meters in a very short space of time. Then we're on top of a mountain pass around and back down to this valley. W wonderful little route, loop. I have no idea what it's gonna be like though, so. Let's just rock and roll. Now every Norwegian knows who Per Gint is, but if you're unaware, Henrik Ibsen, the famous Norwegian playwright and only second to Shakespeare in popularity, this is one of his most famous plays and everybody in Norway must learn this at school. So every Norwegian knows the story, but it's too long to tell you here. But what I can tell you is Setter means mountain farm and Vai or Veg is road. And the direct translation then is Peer Gint Mountain Farm Road. And what a place it is to ride. We're going up to 1,100 meters without any time to warm up the legs. But not to worry, that's my problem, not yours. You're going up here. Look at the belly. Of course, you can go the opposite way and it's gonna be flatter at the beginning, but I would rather get the climb done early on. Well, we are 500 meters above sea level, just over. The gravel has just began. Eases off a little bit, but then we've still got quite a bit of climbing, 600 meters to do. Oh man, I'm excited. Are you? So I wore red today, because I knew there was gonna be a lot of sheep up here, and I've had a few issues with them recently. Yeah, I'm looking at you, mate, I'm looking at you. Uh, they just stand in the middle of the road and don't get out of your way, so. I put the red shirt on. Red is for danger. I'm wearing red. Can't you see I'm wearing red? We've got, we're really high up now. I don't know, maybe 700 meters. Uh, it's a bit cooler up here, which is nice. I've just got an amazing view of the big forest and then the mountains in the distance. Ah, oh, that's where um, Yekavayan, the route is over there. And you can see Jotterheimen in the far distance. If you haven't heard of the play, there's a very strong chance you've heard of the music that accompanied it by the world famous Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg. If this one doesn't ring a bell, the one at the end will. Well, we're now at 800 meters above sea level and we've hit the jackpot because the views are just phenomenal. Um, there's just trees randomly scattered about all over this kind of high mountain plain 
and it's just yeah it's absolutely beautiful just to be riding through one issue is there's so many flies up here i mean i'm just like swamped in flies right now so i'm gonna have to keep cycling a little update from the road i've just seen where we're going oh it looks exciting got some switchbacks going on here Well, I think we're at the top. So as you're climbing, you get views of Jotterheimen National Park on the west side of the valley. And then as you get to the top, you get incredible views of Rondanen, Norway's oldest national park, on the east side of the valley. It's, it's two for the price of one. So have you heard of this one? When international visitors come to Norway to cycle, you do the Atlantic coast, you do Fjord Norway. Yes, I totally agree, these are spectacular places to experience. But, on that second or third visit, this is the place to be. The east side, with these wide open vistas, these incredible gravel tracks. This place is real, it's authentic, and it's the feeling it gives you on a bike. It's always about the journey, and the journey here is no wow factor. Wow factor doesn't matter. What matters is what's going on with your mind right now, and it's being massaged in every spot. I'm having an existential moment right now. I'm just like, ah, oh. I mean, it just makes me want to quit my job and just go out and live out here in a little wooden shack somewhere, just collect water from the stream every day. I probably peed off after a couple of days, but you know, it's just, oh, it's so peaceful out here. Look at this. They see the red. They know not to move any closer. All good things must come to an end, and the gravel does, but what a beautiful sign to end the route. That is pure class. I told you that Peer Gint was a fictional character in a play. However, according to Ibsen, if it might interest you to know that Peer Gint is a real person who lived in Gublansdalen probably at the end of the last century, his name is still well known among common people up there. So when I got back I decided to go to the library and do some research, and what I discovered was remarkable. Firstly. Pirates are amazing. And then I found this old book down in the basement. And what it revealed was incredible. But I didn't read it. Forget that. Reading's the losers. I've got Instagram reels. There was actually an information board at the top of the mountain pass. And I just took a photo of it and then I read it later on. And you know what it said? Records from the 18th century tell of a man named Edda Olsen Horgor, a great hunter and fisherman, and most importantly, he could tell a good tale. He died in 1785, but people still talked about this great man a hundred years after his passing. And guess what? We just followed in his footsteps. Thanks for watching. Are you at me from a scale to 1 to 10?